Now, let me introduce a label in this application. Organize your imports. Okay. In order for a label to be available on the frame, you need to add it to the frame. So add the label to the frame. So you call the frame instance, you call the add method, and you put the label in place. Now, this is a typical example of using an auxiliary function add because it is neither a setter nor a getter nor a constructor. So it's neither a constructor, which is a manager function, or getter, which is a mutator function, uh, or, uh, or sorry, uh, the uh, accessor function, or setter, which is a mutator function. It's none of the three categories. So it's the fourth one anything else which is auxiliary. Now when you run this program, you will now see a label on the frame right here. This is the, deep, the default placement of the label. Okay. Once you do this, we will next learn about how you can increase the font size of the label. One way to increase the font size of the label is to create a font instance, font, font equals to new font. So as you can see, I am continuously following the same syntax that we learned in the earlier chapters, that how to create an instance. Now, font actually belongs to more than one packages. So anytime you try to organize your imports in Eclipse, if the class comes from more than one packages, it asks you which package. So we will use AWT because we are not using a JavaFX application. So now in the font constructor, I will set my font name, font style, and font size. Now let's run it again and you will see, oh, I forgot to do one thing. I forgot to add the font to the label. So label one dot, now we will call a setter just like we traditionally do to set a property and then we assign the font property to the label. So now when I run it, you will be able to see the label larger in size than what it was before because of font being bold size 28. Now the next thing is hover over the bold. What is bold? Bold is actually a value of type integer. It's final but it's, it's a constant. It's a value of type integer with a value of one. Okay. If you change it with the word plain, hover over again, that is also an integer constant of value zero. That means unbold the text. If you replace it with the word italic, and hover over, you will see that it is also a constant with a value 2. And these are all integer values. Plain is 0, bold is 1, italic is 2. So if the middle parameter is 0, font knows not to do any styling. If it is 1, it bolds it. If it is 2, it italicizes it. The question comes in, if I want to do both bold and italic, what should I do? Since they're integers, we do this because if we pass 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1, which is 3 as a middle parameter, font 
will basically make it bold as well as italic. And now when you run it, you will see that it is bold as well as it is italic. Okay, now let's comment line number 13 so I can show you an alternate way of giving a font to a label. If the font is only to be given to a single label, you could either create a named instance and use it, or you can create an unnamed instance that we learned earlier in the course. How you create an unnamed instance? You only type the right-hand side of the equation. So copy what you see as a selected text on your screens, copy that, and replace the font with this unnamed instance. So what happens, it comes to live on a call, gives the properties to the label, and then it's done with. So let's go ahead and run this. And you will now see the same output as before. Okay. Now, moving forward, let's comment out on this. Let's uncomment the font. It's just so that you have all this code on you as your reference code. And let's put it back the way it was before. Now I will introduce another label in this program. So I have a label one. Let me copy this and I'll paste it. I'll call this label two. Hello from Java, spring 2020. Okay. And then just like I'm setting the font for the first label, I will set the font for the second label using the same font instance. And as I told you earlier, that anything that needs to go on the frame must be added. So that's what I'm doing, adding it to the frame. Okay, only label two. The reason is that in the absence of a layout, it can only display one item. That's why layouts are very important if you want to display multiple items on the container. So now what we will do is we will add a layout before we add, okay? So layout, a frame dot set layout. And the layout that I will use is flow layout, which is the most easiest to understand, which means as the items appear, keep showing them in the same sequence in which we add them. And if the item takes whatever space, that is the space for that item. So now when I save the changes and run the code, you will now be able to see both labels just like that. 